Hello, I'm Cyrus Sigari with Jet Aviva, and I'd like to take you along for another fantastic aircraft review of the Phenom 100. One of the things that people are really impressed with with the Phenom 100 is its ramp presence. The aircraft sits quite high for an aircraft of this size. And the ramp presence is even more noticeable when you open the door. You get to the door, hit this little tab here, go to open, and you have what is almost a mid-sized cabin class airplane air stair door to get you on board with your passengers. It's quite wide, so you can get baggage and people on without having to squeeze in, and of course the steps are, uh, are pretty sturdy. It's a real nice way to get into the aircraft. And of course, when it's time to go, just pop that open right there, grab the door like so, and it's closed. That's it. Coming up on the left-hand side of the aircraft, we've got a few things to talk about. One is the angle attack vane. Now this vane is used to provide uh, real-time airspeed information with respect to the critical angle attack. At all times, the computer is calculating 1.3 times the stall speed and providing that information through a green donut on the airspeed indicator. So the pilot has situational awareness in terms of energy management for the Phenom 100. What's also interesting about the angle attack probe is what triggers the stick pusher. So the Phenom 100 is the only aircraft in this class that has a stick pusher. If you get too close to critical angle attack, the, the stick will actually come forward and reduce the aircraft's nose, ultimately stopping a stall. Moving from the vane, we have the pilot side pitot-static tube. So all the information that's shown up in airspeed for the pilot side is captured here, and all the static information is right here. Very simple. The airplane has three pitot-static systems, three independent ones. A primary, a secondary, and a standby. The standby shows up on the gauge in the center of the panel. Moving on to the left-hand side of the nose, we have the oxygen relief high pressure valve, where if we have an oxygen overpressure, this guy will pop out. And of course, the nose baggage area. So there is a nose baggage area that's only accessible from the left-hand side of the airplane. Pop these three latches, and we've got plenty of space up here for engine covers and other sort of stuff that you may need, some small roller bags. Oxygen pressure and oxygen fill is also monitored and accomplished on the left-hand side. Coming over to the nose, we've got the radome, right and underneath here is the Garmin weather radar, which provides information up on the uh, multifunction display, which can also present XM weather information as well. Moving over here to the nose gear, we'll see that there is a unique feature to the Phenom series, which you usually don't see until you get to bigger airplanes. But this has a detachable nose gear link. And if I push this little guy, this guy opens up and will latch onto here once the nose wheel is, um, is straightened. The benefit of this is when you're doing ground handling, they, uh, the ground handlers cannot damage the nose gear system. They can spin it 360 degrees. And then once you're ready, you just put this pin back in like so. So you can notice a very wide uh, width of the landing gear, which is uh, done with these chimes for water. So on landing, if there's a lot of standing water, these chimes will shoot the water away from the airframe so you don't, they don't go up into the engine and the airplane gets certified for what runway landings. Moving up over here is the uh, backup pitot probe for the standby instrument, and over here are the two for the co-pilot side. We also have a backup angle attack probe as well, as we saw on the left-hand side of the airplane. The windscreens are electrically heated. All you need to do is turn the switches on and off. The procedure in the Phenom 100 is typically around 10,000 feet, or before takeoff, if you are in icing conditions. One of the things that the Phenom 100 is really known for is its high-speed performance. The jet can do over 390 knots at altitude and burns less than 90 gallons an hour. All that magic really does come down to this right here, the wing. The wing's been optimized for that high speed performance and also with its slow speed performance as well with the flaps to allow the jet to get in and out of runways less than 3,000 feet long. Another way the Phenom 100 gets its impressive efficiency has to do with the design of the empennage and the aft fuselage. Right over here, as you can see, there's a divot in the main fuselage. And what this is called is aerial rolling. What they do is they suck in the fuselage to allow for the airflow to expand and not get high pressure constricted. This is specifically in higher mock speed areas, adds a lot, a lot of 
efficiency, and reduction in drag. This is very expensive to design and very expensive to manufacture. The Phenom 100 is powered by two Pratt & Whitney 617 engines. These are the very first engines in the 600 series of engines, and it's the core of the same engine that's found in the 615 on the Mustang and the 610 on the Eclipse 500. The Phenom 100 has a conventional T-tail design. On the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer are pneumatic boots that protect the horizontal stabilizer during de-icing. Between the design of the horizontal stabilizer and the wings, the airplane has very benign slow speed handling characteristics, which allows it to get in and out of the short field runways without a whole lot of concern about loss of control. One of the things that Phenom 100 owners rave about is its capacity for baggage storage. You look inside here, the 100 baggage area is without question the largest in its class. You can fit lots of bags and uh, other things they may want to take with you, skis, mountain bikes, you name it. Both the Phenom 100 and its bigger brother, the Phenom 300, have some pretty special brakes known as brake by wire. The brakes are controlled electronically through your feet and then are actuated all the way down to the, the calipers by hydraulics, which are ultimately controlled by a computer system. So there are no hydraulic lines that go to the, uh, the brakes from the pedals. It's all done electronically. Phenom 100 comes standard with six total passenger seats, two pilot seats and four passenger seats. The airplane is single pilot rated, so therefore one pilot and five passengers or two pilots and four passengers. There is an option for a belted potty and also a sideways facing seat at the door, which take total occupant load up to eight people. Standard Phenom 100 configuration is equipped with the forward cabinet where you could hang clothes, you can store food, and drinks and other things that you want to have on board the cabin so that they're not unsightly for your passengers when they're on board. Passengers will enjoy the fully enclosed lavatory located on the aft side of the aircraft, which has, in this case, a hard door and allows passengers to, to use the restroom if needed. One of the things that the engineers at Embraer spent a lot of time working on was the size of the passenger windows. They really wanted the passengers in the back of the aircraft to get a great view outside of the airplane. And if you compare the size of these windows against the size of other aircraft in the class, they're much larger. Along the center aisle of the Phenom 100 is a dropped aisle to allow for passengers to get more headroom as they're walking up and down the cabin of the airplane. All right, now that we've done our walk around, it's time to light this thing up and go flying. So come on board and let's go fly the Phenom 100. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Jetta View's aircraft review of the Phenom 100. If you have any questions about the Phenom 100, give us a call. We like talking about these things as much as we do flying them.